Uh, I will tell a bit about uh, the wooden architecture of Ludwig and its development from the 17th century to 1900. Uh, Ludwig is, uh, let's see, I can, this right, yes. <clears throat> Ludwig is a city in the Nordic countries with the most wooden houses. A registration made in 1972 in connection with an Iconos Congress about the Nordic wooden town concluded this. Only to the two neighborhoods, which is not the main city, uh, Langestrand and Durstrand, 1,115 buildings were registered. And they are still more or less preserved. Ever since prehistoric times, the area around Ludwig has been an important thoroughfare. Ludwig started as a market town in connection to industrial enterprises initiated by the local noble family. There is documented a sawmill at Fadis River in 1539. Two of the most important prerequisites for the city was then present, the port and the power of the Fadis River. Around the year 1600, an iron work was started, which soon became Norway's most important. Ludwig was declared as a port under the city Tumsberg in 1665, but got its own privileges as a city in 1671, when the county Ludwig was established for uh, Ulrich Fredrik Jürgenlöwe, Norwegian Viceroy and a natural son of the king. The Count's residence was completed in 1674. Ludwig Church was consecrated in 1677. The city's importance increased when the Norwegian naval base, the Lisbon, was established in 1750. Until 1814, Norway was under Danish rule, and in 1881, Ludwig became connected to the Norwegian railway system. So now we have some historical facts to connect it to. Uh, we'll start with the 17th century. The vernacular architecture of the Norwegian early modern period, up to about 1700, was comparatively uniform. Jan Mikkel has been telling a bit about uh, this older period. Uh, Ludwig developed into a town mainly in the 17th century. The city itself had a bourgeois class, including bureaucrats, overcome, a petty bourgeois class, including more prosperous craftsmen and seamen, and a lower working class supplying these classes with their services. There were different areas of the city uh, preferred by the different classes. Uh, it doesn't matter. You see here different areas of the city. And uh, this central part is the one to be... Uh, City, the Count's residence, uh, called the Manor House, was established. While on the western side, the industrial development of Langstrand dominated with the workers' dwellings. The wealthy merchants along the harbor here, and the lower classes in Steinmona and later Berkevia on the hillsides. A 
more mixed population gathered around the marketplace uh, at Boulder Harbor here. A mixed suburban development in Torstown existed east of the residence here already in the 17th century. And this developed into an industrial working class area in the late 19th century. New building types developed from a basic scheme to more elaborate plans from a need for more rooms within the same building body. The manor houses developed these forms from the 16th century that were adapted by the city bourgeois and further developed in the 17th century. For a normal bourgeois dwelling, this first implied a separate living room from the kitchen and a separate bedroom from the living room, often also a small office. Uh, the first floor or upper floor was initially rooms for storage that could be used also for bedrooms when necessary. Bourgeois dwellings would also have <coughs> had a separate good storage house with easy access from the harbour and the street. Around 1700 also the bourgeois class started to make presentable architectural facades to the street based on symmetry and an impressive architectural entrance. This was adapted from contemporary manor houses and general European ideals. These are houses in the former Main Street, built by wealthy merchants and county officials in the first half of the 18th century, but with newer panels and newer windows. Simple dwellings kept the basic two-room plan even up to the 20th century. In the 17th century, the roof in the cities uh, and towns were often covered with tiles, brick tiles. The tiles and bricks were then imported mainly from Holland and Denmark, as brick furnaces generally did not exist in Norway from the Middle Ages until the late 18th century. All the same basement walls, chimneys and furnaces of brick and tiled roofs were quite common in the coastal cities and towns. This is also an example of a merchant's house. And these are examples of these entrance doors I told about. From, these are from the 18th century. And also win a window from the 18th century. And these are typical dwellings of craftsmen and uh, petty bourgeoisie in uh, Steinland, the upper part of the city. Here they, these are with panel and windows later, but in the style of the late 18th century. Uh, the mix of tiled roofs on uh, bigger houses and wood, or even turf on simpler dwellings, uh, is apparent in a series of paintings of Norwegian cities from about 1700, uh, or painted in Pony. This painting depicts moss, as we don't have a picture of Ludwig from this time. But it would have been much the same if it was a picture of Lubbock. You see this mix of wooden roofs, turf roofs, and tiled roofs, and of the church. And I guess you can also see some a dwelling probably of the nobility or something with a tower on it. The 17th and early uh, 18th century townscapes were made up of the vernacular, unpainted timber, some panel, and a few brick buildings. But the interiors were all uh, of a common European standard, also including the humble living rooms of seamen and craftsmen. In the 18th century, uh, it was a development. The size of house and wooden roofs uh, was still the main difference from shop, uh, the social uh, uh, 
Cardinal Standard to the bottom, around 1700. The differences of the house appearance developed very much during the 18th century. <coughs> Especially from the middle of the century, the townscapes became more diverse. In Leivik, the merchant houses of the main street along the harbour were in 1767, according to the fire insurance protocol of the Sigmatier, all painted, not only in the basic red, but also in white, yellow, green and blue. At the same time, the use of leaded glass in windows became less and less common. Uh, wooden windows called English, with clearer and bigger glass panes, as I showed you, became common even in ordinary dwellings. And the increasing size of richer houses was an earlier development from the, yeah, the early 18th century. Uh, roof forms developed as well from the simple roofs, uh, roof with gables, that we can call the saddle roof. Already in the 17th century, the hipped, so-called Italian roof, which in Norway is not part of the vernacular, uh, but an imported architectural type of roof, different from Poland. Uh, came around 1650 in Manor Roses. And the, hip, the ordinary hip roof, yeah, like you see it there, was still uh, popular for big houses uh, also uh, in the 18th century. Uh, until the very late 18th century when the half hip roof became the most popular form. Uh, adopted from Denmark and Germany, where it had been a vernacular form. Becoming fashionable in academic architecture there at the same time. And just as the Kant's residence uh, in 1700 got this uh, so-called blue glazed roof tiles, uh, which are really more black, uh, this also became the fashion of the uh, bigger houses, as you see here, all imported from Holland. The panel and painted facades for profiles and cornices and pilasters uh, adapted to wooden architecture from architectural ideals often interpreted quite freely. Trompe l'oeil decoration was used to imitate carved stone decoration and sometimes carved in wood as well. And, yeah, here you see again these uh, wooden doors that are preserved in quite a few houses in Leibig. Always rather German in the design. In the two-story houses, the staircase solution developed from the often open galleries uh, to the backyard side, two staircases incorporated in the houses. And this became common during the 18th century. And in uh, most of the richer households, the ground floor stayed the best floor, but after the big fire of Ludwig in 1792, some other very elegant houses were built with representative first floor. And then we continue into the 19th century where we have the last uh, reconstruction from 1900 coming up. The architecture of wooden mansions generally stayed uh, an interpretation of stone architecture until the 1850s in Norway, when an international academic architecture for wooden building appeared, called the Swiss style after its main source of inspiration. But the style also carried many European vernacular impulses uh, and uh, not the least Polish. And this is an example of about um, from the late 1850s, this early type of Swiss style. And this is another one. The Swiss style came with different plans for smaller houses. 
a double plan with four rooms around one chimney, which also had been used previously, but now it became very common also for uh, smaller dwellings. Elaborate gables and uh, verandas became common. A distinct Norwegian branch of the style became internationally known, and it was even built, I think, maybe even in Poland, or maybe it was German, no? uh, which was based on uh, the style of the state churches, like a chip decoration and medieval locks rather than the more recent vernacular architecture, which was adapted to dwellings and in Norwegian called the dragon style from its most beloved decorative motive. It was first from about 1900 that the common vernacular became an inspiration for academic Norwegian architecture. This later phase created uh, quite good houses also in Leivik, but this is not so relevant to this reconstruction uh, of 1900, which is a bit before. I know that you have the same development in, uh, in Poland. And this is a house for uh, the more uh, yeah, craftsmen and petty uh, bourgeoisie. Uh, as this one as well. As a town of some size, after Norwegian standards, there were also built several buildings of brick in 19th century Lyric. Uh, as gender houses in the city, these were built in the later 19th century, according to five regulations. Before the 19th century, masonry buildings were only uh, the Count's new resident from residence from 1700, which was torn down before our reconstruction from 1767. The church from 1680, the hospital from 1760, and only a single private house from 1714. This was apart from the old castle of the Lange family outside the city that was already ruined in 1654. And this shows uh, the main marketplace in Ludwig about 1900, with plastered facades that came to dominate the cityscape here since the later 19th century. Built in a quite international neo Renaissance, late classicism style of German origin, as you also know it from Poland. Uh, and I guess in the digital, uh, reconstruction of Ludwig in 1900, these whitish and grey stucco facades will dominate around the market square and one of the streets, but apart from that, most of it was still wood and still is. I guess uh, I'll end my lecture here and I now will take over and tell about uh, the work with the uh, reconstructions. Maybe it will be presented in Polish as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.